Greg, thanks so much for taking the time to come on the podcast. Uh, we're super excited to talk to you and learn more about Better Edge. And so maybe just to get started, love to hear more about uh, who you are and uh, maybe your background, right? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. First off, I'm Greg Kayeski, co-founder of Better Edge. I you know, started my career in the accounting finance space and uh, started as a, a PwC. After that, I went to a tech startup called Anaplan, where it led me to really enjoy uh, entrepreneurship and startups. And you know, my co-founder came to me about two and a half, three years ago now with this idea in the sports gaming space to take away some of the fees that uh, had been seen in the sports books. So we really started to ideate around that process that led us to um, really dive in deeper and starting to build out our whole platform around this idea of social betting and how we can connect users for no fees. Got you. And are you a sports better in general, or were you kind of indoctrinated into this space by your co-founder that kind of brought this to your attention? A little bit of both. So I had sports bet, played fantasy, you know, a lot throughout college, but I actually found myself more of a financial investor. And so our platform really takes a spin at bringing a stock market approach to sports betting. So taking a lot of those concepts across all three of those different areas really kind of comes into the bread and butter of our product and then looking at some of the other innovation in tech uh, bringing that forward so you can think of it really as like a venmo plus twitter plus stock market for sports betting where you can send a bet out to adam or one of your friends or you can just say hey i'm gonna make this public for anybody to take and then that allows for it to go out there and trade just like a stock market so you can buy and sell throughout the day so Give me like one reason why the the system that you're building out, the platform you're building, it might be, I don't want to say better because I'm not in the business of throwing shade on existing industries. Uh, people can come to their own narratives on that front, but differentiate it. What's the biggest difference? Yeah. So when you look at what's kind of happened in the history of sports betting, you know, you'd go to a sports book and you would go with your five, 10 friends, you'd have a great time. You'd say, I want to take the Vikings for tonight. And when you put $100 out there, the sports book will say, I'll take the $100. I'll pay you out $190, maybe $180 if it wins. And then if the Vikings are playing the Bills, they'll take $100 in on the Bills. So they'll actually have $200 total on the specific game. However, they're only going to pay out that $190, $180. So they're taking a cut right off the top. And what our platform does is it says, we'll connect that Vikings better with the Bills better. Both of you have 200 in, we'll pay out 200. So right off the bat, we have the best price that you can find within the industry. But then when you tailor that on top of how we view the social aspects and components is you can actually start to track via leaderboards and say, this person is in the top five, let me go copy some of their picks. You can fade others, you can follow, you can do all those things you'd expect to have with kind of a new age tech uh, platform. It's, you know, a lot of people are used to that connectedness and being able to use online social presences to be able to help inform the decisions that they make. So you kind of went through the example of you and I use Better Edge as the platform to do a, do a bet. For, for, for just um, comparison perspective, I'll just say I'm the Bills and you're the Vikings, even though I'm a Vikings fan too. Uh, but so we have 200 bucks in and then 200 bucks comes back out. Um, what's your business model look like then? How do you make money? Yeah, so we make money off of advertisements. So we're working with a lot of different key brands started out in Minnesota, obviously looking to get more brands on board who want to reach sports bettors who have a lot of you know discretionary income to, le to leverage for entertainment. Secondly, we'll also launch premium features. So for 10 bucks, 20 bucks a month, you can sign up for X, Y, and Z features. You'll get the ability to do different things on our platform that you wouldn't get in the free tier, which is quite valuable to help people win more. And then we'll continue to double down on partnerships with you know other companies, whether it's in the retail space or other sports betting companies and do rev share opportunities there as well. So in a world where you are at the size of like a fan duel or, you know, some other uh, sports betting platform, let's just say in a hypothetical, I'm a brand that's looking at two options, right? Better edge versus um, one of the competitors. Uh, why, why would they be compelled to go with your platform and brand? Let's say all else being equal other than just the mechanism that it had uh, as opposed to one of theirs. Yeah. And I think, it comes down to the fact that our brand really aligns to, I think, how the consumers interact and engage. So that fun kind of group text that you have is, 
you know, the nature of kind of our platform being able to talk smack, leave comments, all that type of stuff, I think is pretty valuable in aligning that consumer behavior. In addition to that, one of the things that we love to do is just give back to the community. So I think a lot of, you know, personally, I like to work with other brands that do good. And one of the ways that we've done that is we actually, anytime you place a hundred dollars on our platform, you'll say you save $5 by placing that with us instead of going to one of those platforms. And this last year we ended up, the community donated over $10,000 to uh, children's hospitals through Chad Greer's lead, lead the way foundation. So uh, that's very cool. Yeah, definitely want to continue to do things like that. So as we continue to grow and scale, you know, I want to see $10,000 checks to, you know, every single Metro, every single uh, market so that we can really kind of, give back to a lot of cool different uh, charities and help out the right causes. You know, it's funny. Um, I, I mean, I, I enjoy a trip to Vegas just like everybody else would, you know, the two 24 hour, 48 hour trips to go, go play some, you know, card games and whatnot. And you, you know, the, um, the entertainment world paints gambling and, and that kind of stuff with a with a with a paint stroke that maybe we, we wouldn't really like. But honestly, like some of the most charitable people that I know are are the folks that like to you know place the bet on on sports or whatnot. So that's cool to see that uh, it's actually coming to fruition and in, in, in kind of what I've always thought, which is like the people that like to take risks are also the people that generally are some of the biggest check writers that I that I've come across. Um, so I think that's a unique and awesome value prop that hopefully as you get bigger you can see more bigger impact checks that that you guys can start writing to other organizations too um tell me a little bit about like traction validation uh what have you accomplished so far in your short amount of time uh being a startup yeah so this last sunday we just crossed over 50 million dollars in orders on our platform so that's users placing you know order commitments out to be able to place on the bat which is pretty awesome um because that's only in FY 2022. So to be able to see that trans that transaction volume and the growth that we had, um, that's kind of how we you know measure that. And then if you start to look at a few other metrics that really just kind of show product market fit, we see 75% of our users return after 30 days after placing their first order. So you're seeing that stickiness level of they place a bet, they like it, they continue to come back, they continue to engage with it, they continue to have fun. And I think a lot of that comes down to the features we offer, the social nature of it, all of those types of components. But then on top of it, we're seeing 40% of our new users come from referrals. So not only do they like it and they come back, but they're starting to tell their friends and say, hey, bet with me here, engage. You know, you can send head to heads to individuals, all that type of stuff. So, you know, those three metrics, you know, really make us bullish to say, we have something really special here. Let's continue to, you know, build off that foundation to continue to grow. and do more cool things. So you talked about a little bit of the KPIs and the metrics and traction. Uh, tell me a little bit of your, what what gives you your competitive edge, right? And, you know, I'm giving you freedom to operate in terms of uh, leaving your humbleness at the door. Uh, being in the Midwest here, I know people uh, don't like to brag about their skills or their team skills, or maybe just their product um, differentiation, but what's your, what's your, what's your leverage here that, that you're leaning on? Yeah. Competitive edge. Um, first off, the name's Better Edge, so appreciate the the uh, connection there. Um, I mean, I think in that brand, you know, first off, we we really thought about what makes an edge for the consumer in this entire industry. We built our entire platform around that specific consumer, giving them the best experience. Um, which I think keeping our consumer at the best, you know, at the core of what we do, I think is extremely valuable in our culture. In our culture. But then bringing what we wanted to do to light, I think, is the team that we have behind us. So my other co-founder, James Siles, um, mastermind, kind of CTO. If you think about what he's made an impact in in this space, he's you know built kind of a Venmo, Twitter, uh, you know, entire sports betting platform and brought that to light. So a lot of kudos to him. And then also Tyler on our team as well, as well as a lot of support from our founders, uh, our, our investors, and a lot of our different advisors as well. So um, the right team and continue to excited to continue to grow on that. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty cool space and a lot of opportunities. People dive in to check it out. Yeah, you know, I think when we first talked, one of the things that naturally came to my mind is something that uh, used to be a pretty intense hobby of mine. Uh, and, and if it was a different time, maybe even my profession, which is esports, right? Um, I think there's a huge opportunity there. Uh, you know, I liken esports to be similar to 
um, the Wild West as if like crypto is for traditional markets, right? Um, there's a lot of competition there. There's a lot of money there. There's a lot of avid fans, but everything on the betting side is still kind of back page, black market, uh, you know, shady in a lot of ways. Not in a bad way, but it's just not like it hasn't been fleshed out because the people that are building it out are just kind of duct tape bootstrapping it together. And so there's a huge opportunity there. So, you know, I think as you kind of break into this um, venue in this space, uh, that could be a huge one for you all. Um, one question I did want to talk about, because I think it's probably a question that a lot of early investors would have, is just in terms of like regulations in the space, right? Um, obviously the state of Minnesota doesn't allow for traditional sports betting quite yet. You have to go to, I think Iowa, I think that's the closest place to go uh, to have a chance to place a bet on a, on a sports game. But where do you stand on that? And, and uh, how, do, uh, how does that affect you? Yeah, definitely. So we spent about two years working on our MVP as well as getting our legal opinions sorted out. So when you think about where sports betting is legal, it, it often refers to a business who's actually booking bets or taking bets against you as a house. So our platform is very different in the fact that we're just connecting users the way that Airbnb, you know, connects a house for rent with a renter or Uber connects a rider with the driver per se. So our platform is legal in 45 states across the U S and that allows for us to operate in Minnesota. And you can go ahead and you can place orders out there and somebody else in the state of Minnesota or wherever can obviously take the other side. Um, of that transaction. So that's, you know, how our platform works. We spent a lot of time, energy, really kind of working with control boards and right individuals, legislators to make sure that they understand who we are, what we're doing, and the fact that we're within the laws um, of the state and obviously at the federal level as well. So that's a lot of the work we've done. When I look at what's happening on the sports book space, um, really excited just to see more competition, more access to, you know, for Minnesotans to be able to go down to Mystic or go over to Treasure Island and play sports bets as well. Um, I think there's a huge need for a lot of those different interactions in the community to be able to have a great Friday night out, but then also maybe some different days you may say, Hey, I'm going to send a bet to my friend here or there the same way that I have a traditional bank. And I also have a Venmo. I use them interchangeably depending on what it is that I want to get out of the interaction. Yeah, I think um, I think it's cool that from a federal level and from a state level, uh, you've kind of you figured out the dance of it all to to be in a spot where. So if I'm reading this correctly, you're good to go in every state, or is it still state by state for you? We're good to go in about forty five states. Okay, so that's 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 phenomenal because yeah, I think yeah, I can't I can't think of. Um, um, off the top of my head, how many states don't have legalized gambling yet? But forty-five out of fifty is not bad uh, at all. Um, out of my out of my own personal curiosity, like um, if if they do offer legalized gambling here uh, on sports betting, would would that impact your future pathway, or are you maintaining the course with Better Edge as that kind of more of a marketplace approach? Yeah, so we view that as a rising tide lifts all boats. And as you start to study, you know, consumer behavior and think about what people are doing, I find a lot of people bet where they bet because their friends bet there. So as, you know, the law changes in Minnesota for sports books, people are going to start asking, where do you bet and why? And people will start to say, I bet here because of this. I bet here because of this. And I think the unique thing about that is, is we built our entire technology in-house so it's very innovative it's very different than what's actually out there in the marketplace which because a lot of these sports books are using back ends that are you know the same back end across multiple different areas um so there's very small differentiation in other sports book products but yes yeah, since we built it ourselves we're able to innovate in unique and different ways that i think we'll continue to see users come back to us because not only because we have a differentiated product but yet we also have the best price so we've even surveyed many of our users and said, when sports betting becomes legal here, will you use us? Will you go use elsewhere? And a lot of people come back and say, if I'm continuing to get the best price here, why would I go elsewhere? And I think that says a lot about kind of the community and kind of what's going to happen as more people are wanting to get into sports betting. They'll be looking to know where they want to go. And hopefully our users and community will start to really kind of help guide people to that direction. Yeah, you know, you said the word a few times and, you know, unsolicited advice that you're not asking for. I think 
the one of the foundational things that will help you survive and thrive in this space is building that community, right? Because ultimately, I agree, right? If I were to use the Vegas analogy again, I'm gonna go to the 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 betting lounge that has the best odds for me, right? Uh, best best cuts, best best discounts, whatever you want to call it, least fees. Um, so all things being equal, um, margin is opportunity, right? The famous line from Bezos. Uh, eventually, when this becomes ubiquitous and state to state, fully online, there is no differentiation really for those other groups to to really leverage, right? At that point, and you'll start to see people coming. I bet more towards your model at some point. So the fact that you can be ahead of the curve on that front, I think, is a is a smart move. Um, just just for the benefit of people on this call that might not know much about um, you know sports betting, what is the huge? What's the opportunity size just in maybe like the U.S. alone? I would definitely say it's in the, the billions. Um, I, I mean, I see fantasy, fantasy sports has probably about 49 million um, fantasy players across the U.S. Sports betting, you're probably looking at 20 to 25 million sports bettors across the U.S. Um, I really see this idea of social betting being right in between the two, taking kind of the best opportunities from fantasy because that is kind of that social interaction that occurs. But then sports betting is... A different flavor of that and our platform can really kind of lean into both of those so um you know with over i'd say 40 you know million people having the opportunity to to get into social betting it's going to be a massive opportunity out there i think it's safe to say that um you know obviously it won't be a one-for-one -one correlation that um all those people that might only just do fantasy sports would eventually dabble in um, the actual traditional sports betting itself in the future. So yeah, the opportunity size is pretty big, and I can only assume that as younger generations want to place a bet on maybe like an esports final or something, they're also willing to place a five or ten dollar wager on something uh, to see if they can, uh, you know, pick the right winner as opposed to their buddy that might be supporting the other team. So yeah, I think it's a it's a it's an interesting space to be at, at this current time. Um, I want to turn it over to you to see if there's any. Um, you know things you want to talk about give you the floor to bring up anything shout anyone out uh talk about the future of of, the, of better edge or whatever the case may be yeah definitely actually one of the things i would pick up that you called out a couple times is you talk about esports talk about community and i think when you think of a social platform a social platform is built around community and so the trend lines that you see across you know web3 creator culture esports communities and banding together for you know, the greater good of a product. I, I think we're we're meeting that intersection at a pretty exciting kind of pace to allow for us to really kind of open up a ton of opportunity, which I think is just kind of a few, you know, trends that you've called out and things we've talked about thus far that I, I find pretty interesting. Yeah, you know, I think um love or hate Twitch, they've been doing these things. Uh so you you if you're watching a streamer you accrue points for that streamer's channel and then the streamer can place polls on whether or not they're going to succeed or fail at some given thing that the streamer's working on and the and these i don't know i'm going i'm going to i'm going to assume that they're younger people uh you know really care passionately about these points right and so there's only a few extra steps to take for that to become um something more from a financial perspective you know I, I don't know what that all looks like but i'm sure they're exploring things like that from from their own personal side of things too like what does this look like uh in the future for for their industry as well um how can people find you if they want to download the app give it a go or, or just learn more about the product yeah so we have a progressive web app at betteredge.com that's b-t-t-o-r edge.com so you click join or sign up and we'll that'll take you directly to our web app if you're a Twitter user, Instagram user, um, even our platform, you can follow us. So we really view ourselves as having that social presence and any other sports tech firms can even have a social presence on our platform, allowing for you to engage with our community. Um, give us a follow on any of those platforms. We have an awesome team. You know, Tyler does a lot of stuff in the digital marketing and social space that you'll find some cool stuff there. And obviously we're looking to build that community out and we'd love to have anybody who's interested to learn or even, you know, more experienced individuals jump on board and you've got to help out. And then fill in the blank. If you are a blank, I'd love to reach out and connect with you. I would say 
the cool thing about what we're doing is it's, it's agnostic. If you're, you know, an investor wanting to get on board, if you're experienced in the space, if you're a better, if you're, you know, there's a lot of different things that can, you know, a creator, all kinds of ways. But I think all of those are, are huge opportunities because we're building a pure platform where people can actually interact and build on top of it as well. Got it. Got it. I like that answer. I think um, it, basically what you're saying is you're putting the foundation in place, but it can go in a lot of different directions. So um, it's a it's fun times when you're early stage and you've got a lot of different optionality to how it all plays out in the end. So that's why I love early stage investing because you know you're at the very very beginning of the primordial soup of it all. So um, kind of cool to see. Well, you know I want to keep these concise, and so uh, I really want to say thank you for joining me uh, on the Founders Cut and appreciate you uh, coming on and telling me more about uh, what you're building for the future and uh, look forward to staying in touch and seeing you progress. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Adam. Yeah, thank you.